It's been about a year since we did an episode in the Dream Bike Cave and it is definitely an unfinished project which I am keen to crack on with and in this episode we have got a lot of work to be getting on with. It was always a huge dream for me to one day have a bike cave and last year the workshop that is in front of us right now came to life. My main priorities were organisation and bike storage because having a lot of things and not so much space it's important to be organised. We have a dream workstation and toolbox set up with everything to hand including a fully stocked Red Bull fridge and all of my spare parts are organised perfectly. You might be watching those clips thinking, how is he gonna improve it? What more does he need to do? The good thing with starting a project, having a year break, and then deciding to carry it on, is that you can realise in that year, whilst you're using it, what's missing. Over here, we have got a very blank wall, and the whole garage is functional, this is just a blank dead space, so that needs improving. This right here is the e-bike wall. It's where we store the e-bikes and there's no power to it. So obviously when the bikes are hung up like this charging, the closest socket is here. So I have to run the leads, power packs are dragging on the floor and then plug them in. I know that's not a massive problem, but with such little space, when you're working in here on other things, you end up keep tripping over these cables. Let's get started with the e-bike wall. We're gonna unpack these steady racks and get them fitted. You might be wondering why I just replaced one steady rack for another one that looks very similar. And if you're gonna have the dream e-bike wall, then you need to have the best equipment to make it dreamy. This is a new e-bike steady rack. So it basically, it covers all the same features as the other one. It pivots 160 degrees, which in here is obviously so important because it's what makes them like a library. And in this tight space allows me to actually move around the garage and access things. This one takes more weight. It takes up to 35 kilos. It's more robust takes a wider tire and it fits mud guards. I only run a short fender here, but some people that are running big ones, the area here is stronger than the other one, but also sleek enough to be able to fit a guard behind it. The next thing that we need to work out is organizing the chargers and all the electrics, which I hate. We've got this double socket here, which I plan to run through the wall. I've already marked it. We're gonna bring that out there. That will plug in there, but this is what I mean. They just hang. It's horrible, you've got all that weight just sitting on the floor. So we need to make a shelf there that these sit in. It's gonna be sick, it's gonna look really cool. I think we need to just run a time warp and get constructing. Construction phase one of these garage improvements is complete and I'm so stoked with how this turned out. That is just organization at its best. You can go riding, come home, put the bikes in, bang, chargers are already there. There's no, no damage to the chargers, no pulling on the cables. I wasn't sure with this box whether to have it on the outside or to put it so it was like a hole in the wall, but I think that's simple. We've got a little hook here because the high bikes have a key that holds the battery in and it's one of them things, you never really take them out, you don't really carry it around with you, but I'm always just putting them in the drawer and then, oh, when I need it, I can't find it. So now they're on there, which is ideal. So that's the first upgrade in this episode done and that's really got the ball rolling because the next thing we're gonna be taking a look at is on this big gray, boring, empty wall at the moment. I wanted to put some of my uh, achievements from when I won contests up here and stuff like that and I wanted a television and the reason I wanted a television is because I'm often in here doing work on the bikes over the weekend the MotoGP is on which I love to watch I watch it on my phone it dies it's, it's just rubbish so I want to put a television up here charging again like we've got these sockets here but if you put your chargers they're just like if I charge my drill batteries they're on the floor so this can definitely be optimised. We're gonna make it fancy. I've been inspired by Seth's bike hacks. He's made a cool unit, which I'm gonna try and replicate. So we'll run a time warp, we'll start building the unit. Then once you can see what's gonna happen a bit more, it'd be easier for me to explain my visions and ideas.
This shelf build is coming together absolutely lovely. I bought a new saw, feels amazing. It's cutting the wood perfectly, making all those edges nice and straight. This one, we've actually got to cut at an angle to make it look right. I had to do it with this bit here as well, but it's a very, very small angle. There we are, you can see there, just a little bit of an angle. So I've got to do a bigger one there, and then it's time to screw this thing together. It's starting to get quite late now, but what we have down here is the sickest looking shelf. I'm not gonna go too much into it because I want the big reveal to be once it's all done, but you can kind of start to see how this thing is gonna be playing out and joining the dots together. So let's wrap up for tonight, come back, fresh start in the morning where we're gonna get loads done. New day. We've got another big one in here in the garage today. It's funny because in here, it feels like you just sort of like get in a rhythm and you start making things. And all of a sudden, we come back today and the shelf is ready to go up. We've got electrics to sort out. We've got things to fit. I'm gonna go up in the loft in a bit and get some of my achievements from when I won some contests and various things I've done throughout the years. So it's gonna be really cool to reminisce and look back on those. But before we get to that exciting stage, we have got to just do some more prep. So for now, sanding, screwing, electrics and building. Let's get on with it. there Tom's drilled a hole and that is the cable that runs to the power socket but we've also fitted this extension cable here because we need lots of plugs because we've got the TV we've got the Apple TV because Tom wants to watch MotoGP but we've also got these fancy lights now these are like LED multicolored lights and Tom doesn't have a clue how to fit them so this is where I come in and try and jazz up this piece of wood The shelf's up and we are on top of the shelf. I'm not gonna reveal it just yet. That will come in a minute with all the fancy lights and everything on. But what we're doing here is tidying up the cables. We've got the Apple TV unit. We've strapped a few of them down. We've got this one up here, which is gonna be used for a separate power unit. And we've got the light switch that we're also just making nice and tidy with the trunk in so it's not just like a spider's web with cables absolutely everywhere. Car is down here. You're, what are you doing? Hello, I'm building up a brand new bike, so. Pretty exciting. She's had a bike delivery. So it's all action at the moment. We're gonna get this wrapped up and then reveal the unit that we were making in this episode. I didn't think we'd be saying this at the start of this video, but I cannot believe the changes what we have made in here. Look at this, it's absolutely insane. It's better than I imagined. We've got the television in the middle, which is perfect. It's a bit small, but it's a small garage, so it's fine. Either side, we've got my two custom muck off helmets, this one, probably won't stay in here because it's actually my current helmet and it's the one that I'm using. But for now, and for when I'm not using it, that's its place and it'll take pride in sitting there making the bike cable look sick. The last build lapse clips were of me. The last build lap... Ready? <laughs> oh God. <laughs> the last build lapse clips were of me putting all the trunk in and conduit in to make the cables nice and tidy. So under here, we've got a quad socket. There's four plug sockets there. The TV and the Apple TV actually only take two, but it's very 
it's well hidden there, you can't see it. We've also got the lights on the inside and they actually go for a cycle and change colour. We've got them white now just to sort of brighten it up and show you guys. We've got a double socket here. One of the extension leads is powering this lot. The other one is powering this cable which is fitted to this new little table that we've made. And on here, I basically just wanted something that I could charge my phone when we're in here, hang my keys because I'm always putting them down, doing things and then like, oh, I've lost them. So let's take a look at the achievements. This is something that I've been so excited to go through and just reminisce on because they've been in the loft. So it's actually going to be quite nice to look back and remember when I won these. Car has decorated this bit, so this is, she's stoked with it. She's put these all in the place and dotted them around. All of these white ones that you can see in various places are from Dirt Wars, which is the UK's Dirt Jump series. I won the overall series in 2014. I was runner up in open in my first year, which I lost because I crashed, ruptured my kidney that time and missed uh, two of the last rounds. But this was a series that really helped me to get my name out there back in the day. And yeah, I've won a lot of events there and learned a lot about riding. And yeah, it's, it's been an, it was an awesome series to be a part of. And hopefully next year, I wanna try to do a few more events and it'd be cool to attend the Dirt Wars series again. On top of the entertainment shelf, we have got all of my biggest achievements really. There's quite a lot of trophies up there. There's the big checks that you used to win. You can't cash them in, unfortunately, even though it'd be funny to try. But this is probably the stuff that means the most to me. They're my best results. I wish with my contest career that I would have, I didn't really have many sponsors back then and I didn't have much funding. I was working a lot to fund it and it's really difficult if you don't have the support to actually pursue the events and do well at them whilst working because you've not got time to train. But I'm happy with what I achieved, I'm stoked and it's obviously led us to a good place now which is doing the YouTube stuff. There's a lot of good memories up there and I could spend a long time talking about each one and going through it, which I'm not gonna do in this video, but maybe that could be a winter episode. The one thing that I am gonna grab down is this helmet from 2010 or 11. And you might be looking at that thinking, what the hell, it's horrible. But I've got three signatures on here. One of them's actually rubbed off. We've got Martin Ashton here, when he was riding the Action Sports Tour, I queued up for ages at Bike Radar to get his signature in one show. And that's what made it a dream for me. I was so inspired watching that and it made me a dream to ride that show. So to later on be on the MBE and the Action Sports Tour, was an absolute privilege and to have my name on that van, that very van, once them guys stopped was honestly such an honour and I take so much pride in having had quite a few years to represent that, that show and be in that position. Unfortunately, I never got to ride the shows with Martin for, before his accident, but we have had some six shred sessions since. On the front here, that signature belongs to Sam Pilgrim and this was Bike Radar 2011, I'm pretty sure. I didn't even know Sam then, I queued up. He was doing a sh an action sports tour show later in the day. He just won the dirt jump comp and then they brought him straight over, straight into the show. So he was doing a lot of work that day and he was probably exhausted, but he took some time at the end for the fans. I was one of them fans back then. And the reason I keep this is because it's just quite surreal to think like what me and Sam have now done. We've become great friends, we've traveled, we've done a lot of riding and filming together. You guys seem to really like our videos together and it's just quite funny that at one point I was stood there queuing up getting his signature so if you're a younger rider watching this perhaps I've met you perhaps you've met Sam Matt whoever to just keep keep trying get your head down and if you want something bad enough you can get it and there's no better proof than that I can't really believe what we've achieved in this episode this area has really brought the bike cave to life and with the e-bike charging section now that's been upgraded and everything is going to be super convenient and easy. We're now heading into winter which means I've got so many ideas and things that I would like to do in here. Let me know what you guys think or what you would do. For example this space is still quite empty and I think that you could make some kind of table or workbench that pulls out. That could be a possibility. We've got some drawers that need organising. My tools are just sort of everywhere. So there's plenty that we could be getting on with. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this one. I know that I did. Leave some comments below and I will see you guys in the next video. Yeah. I'm like an addict, do I gotta have it? I ain't even playing, got a really bad habit. If it moves, gotta grab it. Fuse like a magnet, lose won't have it till I'm doomed in a casket. I ain't playing, got a weird mind. If you work eight hours, I'ma work nine. If the shit tastes sour, you should taste mine. I'ma stay in power for a long time. Get up, nah, I ain't a 